Alright, we are going to get started by using the My Studio website. So let's go to mystudio.com. Once you're at the site, you need to click on the red sign up button. So we click on join now. It's very easy. We type a username, our email, and our passwords. Click I agree and register. Now, as you can see, we are now logged in. So we can start creating our quiz. However, we need to have something to create our quiz about. So go to a new browser window and type YouTube.com. Once you're at YouTube, you need to select a YouTube video. So I'm going to search for Micro and Oscar the Grouch. All right, here it is. So I click on that. So now what we need to do is go back to our My Studio and start creating our quiz. Back on the My Studio website, we can click Create Quiz on the menu or this Create a Quiz button on the page. We are now taken to this page which gives us the option of two different quizzes. Well, I think for our learners the multiple choice quiz is the best. So, on the big black button, create quiz. On this page, we can start designing our quiz. First of all, select a design for our quiz. There are many to choose from. However, I like this green one. I'm going to preview that. Alright, I think that looks fine. So I'm going to click close and I'm going to double click the theme and you'll see that it appears in the box. Now scrolling down the page I have some advanced options. In this I can choose to upload a photo or a logo for my quiz front page. But actually I don't want to do that so I'll leave that out and I click Next. On this page we have to start creating our quiz introduction. So we need to give our quiz a title. Scrolling down the page you can give your quiz a category. You can select a subcategory. Once you've added the subcategory it will ask you to tag your quiz. So if people on the My Studio site want to find your quiz, they can by typing in some search words. I don't want anybody to find my quiz, so I'm just going to leave this blank. But that is entirely up to you. Scrolling down the page, I have the option of adding some media. I can add a photo, I can add video, some text, or just leave it blank. I want to put in my YouTube video for now. So I click video and now it's asking me to paste a URL for my video. In this I need to go back to my YouTube video and on the right of the screen you will see it says URL and there's some computer writing. So I select that, right click, copy, I go back to my studio and I right click, paste, click submit. Now you can see my introduction video is the Mike Rowe and Oscar the Vrouch video. Click next. On this page we start adding our questions for our quiz. You have two options. You can have the questions appearing in order or in random order. Now on the box at the bottom of the page you can see it says add next question. Click on that. The first box asks us to add our question. So I'm going to type my first question. The next four boxes we need to provide some answers. 
Once you've written in the options for the answers, you need to select the correct answer. Scrolling down the page, we can select some media to put on our question. I'm going to select an image to go with my question. I select image, click browse, and I've saved a picture of Mike Rowe on my computer. I select it. And next time I submit this question, there will be a picture of Mike Rowe next to the question. Now, down here we have some advanced options. Click on expand and you can enter some feedback text that the students will see when they get the answer right. You can type your comment in the box. As well as typing the text, you can do all sorts of things with it. For example, you can make it bold. As well as that, you can select the text and add a hyperlink. I'm going to add a hyperlink to the Discovery Channel. I select the text, click the chain link, and I have to put the URL of the Discovery Channel in the box. I want the Discovery Channel to open in a new window and I click insert. And there we have it. You can edit your text in some very interesting ways. Scrolling down, we can set the time limit for the question. I'm going to set the time limit to 30 seconds for my learners. Once you've finished all of that, click Submit Question. On this page, you can see our question has been added. You can see the picture of Mike Rowe that I embedded. You can see my question options. You can also see the feedback. You can preview the question. You can go back and edit the question, or you can delete the question. On your right, you will see a new box that says Add Next Question. Continue following these steps until you have added all your questions. As you can see, I have now entered all of my questions. At the top of the page, click Next. Alright, on this page, we can edit the page ending. You can either use the default page ending, which gives the learner a score and a ranking, or you can do a DIY ending. You can choose a score range, you can add a title for the score, you can put in an image or a video or text, and you can select what you want your learners to do when they see their score. In fact, I'm just going to leave it on the scoreboard, the default. Click Next. Alright, on this page we need to decide what we are going to do with our quiz that we have created. We can just leave it as a link which our learners can visit, or we can embed it in our blog, or we can send a link to our Gmail contacts. We are going to look at how to embed our quiz on our blog. The first thing we need to do is simply click copy. Now you need to go to your blog. On your dashboard you need to go to pages, edit, and where it says YouTube listening activity, click edit. On this page you need to make sure that the HTML tab is clicked. This is the visual tab, but we want the HTML tab. In the box Simply right click and paste. You have now pasted all that computer code for your quiz. I go update page and preview changes. And here we can see our YouTube quiz has been embedded into our blog. When learners go to this page, they will be able to participate in this quiz. As a final note to this tutorial, I'd like to give a little bit of a warning. 
When working with My Studio Quizzes in your blog, sometimes you might find that your quiz disappears. This is because you are working with what's called an iframe. Iframes are very touchy. They don't like you to switch between your visual editor and your HTML editor. Therefore, I suggest that you select all your computer code, copy it, and save it in Notepad or some other word processor. That way, you will always have the computer code handy if it disappears.